as if macros in Excel hadn't caused enough security problems in our history. Microsoft is going to one-up themselves. Let's hear it from Peter for today's not-so-critical update. This is that Microsoft are bringing JavaScript to Excel mere days after they have announced uh, to much fanfare that they are dropping Excel macros, which have been probably one of the biggest vectors for malware and phishing ever. I mean, there are just so many examples of macros in, in not just not just Excel, but like Word documents and stuff like that. And people have constantly been saying, why are they enabled by, by default? And there's all sorts of security controls, but they just don't work because, uh, which is proven by the fact that hackers are still trying to, still using them. So yeah, that happened uh, fairly recently. They're like, hey, you know what? You know what? Well, it might be a good idea if we disabled macros, took out the macros. They just don't seem to be working. Right, great. Everyone's like, yeah, well done. And now idea. JavaScript, which is, it's like macros on steroids. Oh my God. But like, here's the thing. So JavaScript inherently is not bad, right? We talk a lot of shit about JavaScript. JavaScript is a macros. bad rap. No, but vanilla JavaScript, not bad. Not terrible. I love vanilla JavaScript. It's, I think it's, it's not, not, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, I it's, think it's a, a very revolutionary. Cool yeah. Um, but then, you know, libraries and frameworks and more and more, uh, uh, it got more and more convoluted with time yeah. and more and more obscure with time to the point, just like with macros or, or PowerShell or really anything that ha ha has been cursed with the ailment of time, um, and age, it just became this monster that we all look down on. And every time you heard the words JavaScript, you sighed and rolled your eyes. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, suppose yes. That's not really how I thought about it. But I mean, I thought about it as, hey, there's this complicated thing that you can do in Excel called macros that let you automate things like uh, viruses. <laughs> uh, and for years and years and years, it's been a problem. And then Microsoft yep. finally got rid of it. And now they're putting in JavaScript, which is like, it's basically macros, but just yeah. more complicated and easier to use for exploits. Right. They're going to put some security controls on it and they're not going to work. No, no, no. Security, the security controls will work. It will be the uh, old boomer accountant who'd say, hey, I need you to enable this for me. I can't <laughs> yeah. run my monthly, you know, whatever. Like, just run as I administrator. I need this right now. Just it's run. Fine. I need this. Like, and yeah. of course, JavaScript is going to have privs. And, and as soon as you click yes as the as the domain admin, now that shit can be run in the system. Yeah. And a new vector has been born. <laughs> well, reborn, I guess. So nice. stats probably already available. But uh, my, my first thought was, man, I hope they do this, bring this to Google Sheets. <laughs> 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 that sounds awesome. But I don't use Excel. I do everything in Google Sheets. I, I want this. Google Sheets has JavaScript stuff, doesn't it? I think Google yeah, Sheets has uh, Google. Um, what's it called? It's based on JavaScript. What is it called? Google it's script? called Google BB? Script, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Google Apps. Just don't use it enough. Is that it. Google like Apps it. Script is that? Who is that, uses is Excel? Not? Though? And then it's like dot g. It's like dot gs. Oh, oh! Can I just say I've been doing a lot of hiring recently for a, a BI, a business intelligence role that we have at work, and um, basically every single CB ha talks about uh, Excel and how they're skilled they are in Excel, and and um, that's BI. Yeah, Excel is is business intelligence basically, mm -hmm. which <laughs> is bizarre to me, but apparently that's. That. Excel is like probably Microsoft's, I don't want to say most successful, but it's like the Notepad++ of Microsoft. <laughs> like really, really. Because Notepad++ is just chef's kiss. You know, I love it. And Agreed. I couldn't live without it um, compared to Microsoft's Notepad, which is just the worst. Um, I feel just, like Notepad++ taught me that I never have to save anything. 
That's very true. It's definitely I've I've found myself with like two hundred unsaved Notepad plus plus tabs. <laughs> you don't have to worry about like, it. You just code. close it. You guys it's fine. logs. You configs. guys need to check out Sublime. It's it's. I, so I've used Sublime and uh, I went right back to Notepad plus plus because it's well just better. Um, <laughs> okay, well I will fight you on that one. Yeah, right. so I gotta say I'm uh, putting this down in my my notepad of that. That's what you forgot to take to, into uh, account, Peter. <laughs> like things that I don't like about Jung. Yeah, I also use Nano, by the way. <clears throat> no, I seriously, use, I, uh... whatever horses for courses, whatever, whatever, whatever you works for you, mate. I don't care. Yeah, but but I think Excel is like that. That uh, this is the thing really that gets is. me about the whole. Sorry. This is the thing that gets me, right? Notepad is one of the reasons it was so bad is because, you know, they took 15 years to add word wrap or font resizing. Right, right, it's right, fairly right. basic stuff like that. And then they finally did it because everybody was complaining it didn't have it for all that time. And everyone was like, hey, yeah, well done. So then the same thing happened with, with macros in Excel where they were finally disabled. And everyone was like, well done. And day, the minute they did this, they introduced JavaScript. I don't know whether that was a plan or alone, but it's like Facebook's facial recognition thing. <laughs> Facebook, yeah. we're not doing any recognition, Move. facial recognition anymore. Meta, uh, guess what we're doing? Yeah, we facial are. recognition. Yeah, exactly. it's, well, it's it's kind of like um, Facebook saying we're not doing facial recognition. The Meta going, hey, yeah, but we're we're doing uh, uh, brain reading now, <laughs> right. where when you pass through airport security, we can read your thoughts. That's happening. Can't they basically know. do that now? I was freaked. I kind like, of, look. Yeah. I have very low threshold for privacy concerns as you well or high threshold i don't care about Do you privacy. Have a threshold? i went through airport secure uh customs to come back into the u.s and they never asked for a passport you just had to stand in front of a camera for like two seconds and then they're like okay go on through how like even trying to imagine how a computer was capable i can't get my picture taken that fast on my on my webcam i stand there wow, for seconds terrifying. they took the picture looked me up and knew everything they needed to know about me within seconds. I was blown away by that. It, felt, it did okay, feel kind of creepy. Wait, that's that terrifying. reaction that you had right there, that's how everybody else feels about like most privacy stuff. But, Remember that feeling. But it's, it was like, so it was kind of startling in the moment, but that technology is oh. amazing. And then you went back to, oh, well, I suppose that's just normal, actually. Everybody should expect this. <laughs> no, I was really like, impressed that they were able to do that. I think that's incredible. Like, I, and like, how does that? I, the, the and the level of confidence the guy like he didn't ask me any questions. I didn't. He didn't ask me who I was. I don't even know if he looked at my board. I mean, he must have looked at my boarding pass. Probably have no. Does did he? You probably have a they, crazy. one. Well, one. I imagine there's a relationship from the countries you flew between. Mexico. And two. So Mexico and the U.S. definitely have a relationship. So Mexico, most likely, America knew you were coming back from Mexico. One. Two, you're an American citizen, right? Like someone with a green card or, or a tourist is going to be vetted way harder than an American citizen. Three, but they didn't ask for that. Terrifying. They don't know if I had a what green card. What do you mean? Ask, of course they did. They scanned your face. Yeah, that was weird. They ran that it was really their, weird. They ran it against. They ran it against their database. I know. And what I, What I wanted to is, know was this is Mike. Did well. That's what I wanted to know. Is did they find out who I was, or did they just run me against a list of people they didn't want me to be? No, you probably have a threat score that's like at zero. And oh, I wouldn't say zero. <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, benefit very of being a job. white American next time, male. Yeah. Well, <laughs> next time Mike flies, it's like, hey, can you come take a step into the secondary <laughs> screening room no. and go ahead and drop your pants your for us? Well, yeah. We've got a few questions. Yeah, <laughs> some hard questions. No way, no way. Um, uh, it's a total tangent, though. But uh, on JavaScript, I no, would no, have no. really... Actually, oh. I, no, no. I, I, I had a point about this. I wanted to bring it back because I think... Sorry, John. John was trying to make a point here. We cut him off. I don't but, remember. You know, whatever. I don't care. Far adrift. Um, I've got a point to say now. I think, despite all this wonderful magical technology to recognize your face and, and figure out who you are and, and how dangerous you are not, um, there's going to be a massive data breach at some point because yeah. some guy is sitting there in the TSA offices with a massive 
spreadsheet open in Excel and right. some JavaScript, he's going to open a phishing email and JavaScript's going to go boop. <laughs> Yeah. So I wonder how immutable this is, right? Like what kind of safeguards do you have against me pretending to be Mike? If I wanted to get into the country, you know, I'm, I'm a bad person. I want to do bad things in America, um, mm -hmm. but I'm from a bad place and they know that. So they're going to stop me. How, I wonder how easy it would be to swap faces. Just ask I think Nicolas they did a Cage. documentary about this. And this yeah. is where blockchain comes in. So blockchain. Oh wow, he's is... really putting it all together. Wow. <laughs> okay. I was just gonna say it's immutable and make a joke about how crypto solves everything. Oh. You guys really. But then you realize you realize he actually had a good Maybe. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I've said that before. Actually, like that blockchain technology, immutable ledgers in general. Well, we I talked know. about this. I don't know. Maybe you were here for this, but the the problem with identity theft is our limited ability to identify people for financial transactions so we mm -hmm. could try you know what information do you know that no one else knows what's unique about you that nobody else has that's why we go no, through bio, all these bio, things bio stuff is bad too so and you're saying uh, blockchain is the answer blockchain is definitely the answer and mm, okay. uh, that's where the end of my argument lies <laughs> um, it's just, it's, that's yeah. it that's there's no more data points or or stats or proof. Uh, no. That's just the way it is. Accepted yeah. at so face they value. JavaScript in Excel, crypto. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looping us back into like, Google and JavaScript. Yeah, yeah uh, no, Google, it's, I'm sorry, I uh, like Microsoft. It. Uh, I, like yeah. I did read a really interesting article this morning about the use of non-visible characters in JavaScript to introduce backdoors. And they were talking about how of the character codes that text editors can understand, there are some of them that are valid codes that cannot be seen or rendered in a, in, in a software application. I just thought this was yeah. super interesting. Uh, and especially as we're talking about some of the vulnerabilities of JavaScript here or the potential risks of JavaScript. Uh, and this is not a new concept. Um, no, but super interesting. I thought. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. I've actually experimented with this in PHP. I have a file which I can no longer edit, um, which has got some non-printable characters in it, which is valid PHP and runs uh, a cool. code inside it. Yeah, I, and you can't read it if you just look at it in the standard text editor. Is it just looks empty because it's it, you can use the not backspace or like the delete character or something like that, mm -hmm. a, a character, a control code, as a valid function name because it's a fully UTF. Eight, uh, Whoa. Yeah. That's it's, very it's cool. whack, wacky. Yeah. Um, I always yeah, thought that fun. would be interesting for password management. Like if I, if part of my password could be that I type it one way and then backspace <clears throat> and retype it a different way. Oh, that's interesting. That I thought that could be I fun. I played like with this as well, actually. Yes. A spin and on your typing. Funnily enough, in, um, so on a Unix command line, uh, com a control U, U is, it's a kill uh, line, I think, or kill to the beginning of the line um, control code. And if you try and use that when you're typing something in and you do control U, it will actually delete all the, sp all the thingies, but only in some cases. For the standard mm -hmm. login prompt on a Unix machine, it will uh, erase your current password and you can start typing in again. But other places, it puts it in. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm getting boring here, but um, yeah. <laughs> It's no, but I see where you're. I see where you're going with it. It's just like uh, on Windows and, and some Unix systems, Control Backspace will sometimes add the command. Uh, what was it, what is it you called it? Uh, uh, control oh, signal. Yeah. Instead of deleting okay. everything, it will add that character. Now we can't, you know, see what that character looks like. But what I'm saying is that could totally be uh, added uniqueness. This is the uh, weird yeah. and wonderful world of terminal emulation, right. which is all started with an actual terminal which connected to a computer and it would send um, ASCII sequences, which would then get printed on the terminal. And then you needed control codes to do things like move the cursor backwards and forwards and return right. to line and stuff like that. And that just got more, you have the ASCII character set, which is all the printable stuff, and then the extended ASCII character set, and yeah. then you have all the weird other stuff. Um, and it's it, there's just layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of in, like interpretation it all it's just a horrible mess
Well, my I was going to say that gets so complicated so fast. My my final conclusion from this article though was the next time I am really struggling to troubleshoot oh, yeah. JavaScript, JavaScript, I'm just going to assume that it's because of a non-visible character and it's not my fault. Yes. Yep. Well, problem solved. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the farthest rabbit hole we've ever dove. We were like way yeah. out or I don't even I don't know where yeah. we ended up. It was fun though. It was fun. <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs>